Welcome to the channel. The Black Forest Lab released uh, one of the variants for the Flux 2, which is called uh, Clean, which is a smaller version. This is the announcement. Looks uh, quite nice. I think this can be an alternative if you are interested uh, in generating images, either from text or from image. So they have both versions. I think the good thing is that uh, the model size is uh, quite uh, smaller compared to their previous version. So there are two versions. One is uh, 4 billion parameters, another one is 9 billion parameters. We will see how to run the smaller version, the 4B version on MacBook and see how it performs. We will be use the Comfy UI to run it. Make sure that you change your directory to your Comfy UI location and do a uh, get a pull to pull the latest updates. Yeah, and uh, after that, you also need to activate your Python virtual environment, either using Conda or use the VEMV. Also do a installation of the updated requirements.txt, and you can start it on your MacBook. Once it's ready, go to your web browser and uh, I will provide uh, the download link to the workflow I modified. So I think that's uh, cleaner and easier to see compared to the official work workflow. So this one is for the 4B distilled version. So for the distilled version, the important part is that there is a balance between the speed and the quality. So if you want to, it to generate fast, you may sacrifice the quality. So, so Compared to the normally the 20 steps, the distilled version only requires four steps. So that's much uh, smaller than the 20 step, 20% 20 of, of it. In order to run it, you also need to download some of the models. I also included uh, all the links on the note here. So make sure that you download those and put those into your Comfy UI location, that should be simple. One thing I want to mention is that if you want to save some of the memory, some VRAM, you can use the GGUF version. However, for the GGUF version, it will be like generating slowly, then slower than the four version because it's only like a four billion parameter models. So it doesn't require a lot of disk space. Uh, so I really recommend to stick with the original model here. For the text prompts, if you are looking for inspirations, I had a, a website include some of the prompts. So feel free to check them out. I will include the URL onto the video description. So feel free to take a look. So now we can try it now. Um, input the text prompts and uh, you can change the width and height and uh, click the run to get us started. Yeah, so here is the RAM, here is the GPU and the CPU is here. Took 18 seconds for the four step uh, diffusion steps and the results looks uh, quite nice. So the total time is 40 seconds, so let's generate it again. So this time let's try another one. So the way you use it is just click it and there's a copy button, click on that and you can paste it here. And uh, press wrong to get started. And we see the RAM takes about uh, 20 gigabytes and the speed is like uh, about uh, 18 seconds for four steps. Mm, all right, so less than half a minute. I think you can generate images quite uh, realistic. Okay, nice. That's the distilled version. So let's uh, do a comparison with the base version. So for the base version, as I just mentioned, it will take 20 steps instead of the four steps. So it's right here. For the demo purpose, I will decrease uh, the width and height. For the 1024 by 1024, it uh, will take uh, about uh, three to four minutes. So that's a little bit too long for the demo. So we'll try the 512 by 512, so here. So this is especially useful if you want to experiment with your prompts. And uh, once you 
know that your prompts works, you can increase the width and the length. All right, so let's press the run to get started. So, so actually the the so actually the size of the model between the base and the distilled are the same. So it doesn't really matter in terms of the disk space. It just matters about the quality because the base version requires more steps of diffusion. So that just can give you a higher quality of the output. I think the good thing is that you can use the distilled version as an experiment intermediate step. Once you are satisfied with the setup, with the all those details, you can use the base version. Yeah. So as I mentioned, because I used the, the 512 by 512, so it only takes 51 seconds to generate an image. Yeah, and we see it uh, looks uh, um, also really nice. So let's do a comparison. So this one is the base version. So this one is the distilled version. As I mentioned, you can get an idea about uh, the general uh, speed of it. I also want to share my experience using this model. So this is some of the outputs the model generated. As you can see clearly, some of those I have some bigger issues. So for example, the texts are not correct. And in this case, the physics doesn't look good. Uh, I think uh, it might be because of a distilled version. Even though it's much quicker, the quality wise, we probably cannot trust it. So I think the most practical use for the distilled version is to use it as an intermediate step, especially for the lower end machine, I think uh, uh, if you cannot afford uh, the bigger model, you probably can only use the distilled version. However, if your machine is able to run the bigger model, just uh, go with the bigger one. I think uh, um, the smaller one just uh, not worth it. Instead, if you haven't tried it, please use the Z image model, which can run perfectly on Mac. I previously uploaded a few videos, including Laura. Please check them out. Thank you for watching. Please give it a thumb up and share it. Please subscribe to the channel for future content. Thank you for your support. Goodbye.